am so thrilled and excited to welcome one of my, just the people, a dear friend, and one of the people in the world that I admire, that I look up to, and one of those people that you just know, that you know, that you know, the moment that you meet them. She's my friend, Brittany Turner. She's a serial philanthropist. She's a real estate developer. She travels the world in times of crisis and helps people in recoveries and natural disasters. She's just an incredible human being. Welcome, Brittany. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you, Rachel, for having me. I'm so excited to finally be on your show. No, I mean, it's like this is your, this is right up your alley, Sunday Soul, what you do, Brittany. And I have to tell people, um, it, it was really, really neat. I was, I was at a meeting. I was in your building a couple of years ago. And, um, and we were there for another meeting and I happened to sit in and you were sitting at the end of the table and I was just bold enough, just bold enough to ask if I could play this little hype video I had for I'm changing the narrative. And I remember my heart was beating out of my chest and, you know, it's a bunch of men and you and I are there and a few members of your team of Ariel and we watched the video and you were so encouraging to me, Brittany, and and from that moment forward, we got to know each other. I did your podcast. I became a part of this mastermind we're going to talk about later called GeForce, which has totally enriched my life. But I have to just build you up and take a moment to to tell you. I may have never told you that story, but um, you have a natural ability about you to build people up and make them feel important because people are important. And you did that for me, Brittany, and you really validated me in a moment of boldness. And I have to thank you for that. Oh, you're so welcome. I just remember this high energy, stunning lady coming into my office and like, you, she couldn't be stopped. And I was like, who is this chick? And then I was like, this woman is on fire. She is going to get done whatever the heck she wants to get done. She's going to, there's no obstacle that's going to stay in this woman's way. And then she played this hype video and I was like, I love it. This needs to be even bigger than, than whatever it is, because it was already huge, but how can we make this international? Yeah. And so I've just always believed in you. And I was so blessed that you were on my podcast and to get to hear your heart. You know, my podcast I had you on was a GeForce podcast. It's yeah. how how did you become a force for good? And I really believe that you are not just a force of nature. <laughs> you are a force for good. And you're so just like brave and all the things I don't think I'm brave in. And so it was really fun to get to interview you to hear how the heck you do what you do. So for the listeners out here who have been loyal listeners to Rachel, she is just a privilege to know. I'm, I'm so grateful you do what you do for humanity by sharing and, and continuing to produce this every week. This is just uh, powerful content that I know will shape generations. So thank you. Thank you. So Brittany, um, for somebody who is getting to know Brittany Turner right now, developer, founder of Ariel, one of the things that I love that you do because you go by so many names. First, and I ask this people, I ask this to people a lot. I say, you know, if you're involved in a lot of different things, like what is your title? What would you like people to call you? Maybe even what's your heavenly title, Brittany? What do you think God calls you? Dang. <laughs> Good question, man. Uh, my middle name is Faith. And when my mom was like only a couple of weeks pregnant with me, she heard God tell her to name this child Faith. And she's like, well, I hope it's a girl. Um, and she said this, or he said this child would have to walk by faith all of its days. And it's been very true, which is annoying because faith means that you can't see something, you know, but you believe it's going to happen. So you're constantly insecure. Like maybe it's not going to happen, but then it does. Maybe it's just my story. And so I think faith is, hopefully I'm answering your question correctly. Faith is definitely something that I've had to live by every day. And my title would be the person that lives by faith. And every decision, you know, I've like the weirdest entrepreneur ever because I don't, I don't do things to like get into business for business sake, or don't get into real estate to be the best real estate developer. I, I get into everything to learn so that I have the tools and the resources to accomplish my life purpose, which is creating opportunity for those who have none and wiping out social issues at their root, such as poverty and human trafficking. Okay, so I, I was about to have to grab a, um, 
a tissue when you told that story because my mom too, so your middle name's Faith and my middle name's Joy. And uh, my mom had one of those visions um, before I was born and she actually wasn't saved. And, um, and I, I wasn't planned, but the Lord told her uh, before she knew she was pregnant, he gave her a vision and said, you're going to have a baby girl and she's going to change your life. And uh, my mom subsequently got saved when she was pregnant with me and decided to have me. And um, I had two older brothers. I have two older brothers. And so to hear that your mom also had a vision over your life, that God gave her the vision and your faith, I'm joy, and that we get to come together. And after that meeting um, and that podcast, you allowed me to be a part of a mastermind. And I'd always heard about masterminds, Brittany, um, but I'd never been a part of one. And it is literally the most amazing thing. It is world changers and amazing, thoughtful, heartfelt, soul, successful entrepreneurs and people from all over the world that come together, share their knowledge, build each other up, do great things in the world, like get a disabled woman a van or work on sex trafficking or hold seminars to learn how to day trade and, and work cryptocurrency. I mean, it's, it's insane how to, how to you know, uh, work the, the real estate market. And so, I mean, what was behind, and I know so many people are going to be watching this and saying, I want more information. And we will put that in the notes as well um, so that you can check out this mastermind. What was the impetus for creating a mastermind, Brittany? Frustration. <laughs> All my businesses have been started from frustration and most of my best ideas are frustration. And I want to encourage anybody listening to this, that anything you're frustrated about, you've got two options. You can become a hater activist and just talk a bunch of crap about whatever it is that you don't like, or you can realize that you have the vision of a higher standard. You have a vision that things, why am I so annoyed? So I call it summoning your inner annoyance and saying, what is bothering me so much about this? And literally that is an app. That's an invention. That's a community. That's a business. Because if you are bothered by the way things are done, then you understand mm -hmm. it could be here. And all you have to do is bridge that gap and you do it through encouragement, through designing, okay, where, what are the missing pieces versus like, I can't believe it's not already like that. That's really you almost cursing that wisdom that you've got. And what seems like common sense to you, a lot of times I've been checked is like heavenly wisdom. And God had to like slap me one time and be like, Hey, the more you talk crap about this, the more I'm going to take it away because mm. it's, you think it's common sense because I've given I've downloaded this so powerfully inside of you that you, you can see it already done, but mm -hmm. don't think that's normal. And so don't lose the blessing by having an ugly attitude about it is my encouragement to you all. So G force <clears throat> is really my frustration with the fact that I have a huge heart. It, there's no arguing that, you know? Um, and I started my business so that I could fund my missions because I freaking hate asking for money and I didn't want to. Me too. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great way to do it. And it's not pride. It's just like, I don't want somebody to cap my calling. You know, mm -hmm. there's a way to let people be part of your mission. And I've learned that now, thankfully, and like how to let people be part of the journey versus doing it all myself. But I didn't want to have to rely on somebody saying no. And therefore I couldn't rescue that child. You know, I wanted mm -hmm. to be able to create some kind of funding source on my own. And I encourage you all to do that. So the frustration I had was everybody said, Brittany, your heart is too big. You, tear, you care too much about people and the planet to actually be successful in business. You have to be a nonprofit. And I was like, I don't want to be a nonprofit. Like I do have a nonprofit, but I didn't want to exist as just that. And it's just not, not what I felt called to. And so I said, screw it. I will do this on my own. So for the last 13 years now, almost I yeah, 13 years, I have been learning how can you be a force for good in the world and still be a for-profit? And how do you go from living in your car to literally owning an island that's a force for good in 10 years? You know, I, and without any investor in my company ever bootstrapped the whole thing, I went through two recessions now and I own six companies and a nonprofit. I became a millionaire at 23 years old in the middle of the last recession. Yeah, 
I have a huge heart, but I'm freaking successful too. And you can do them both. You can do both. And so that's what GeForce is, is just downloading how to scale your income and scale your impact, how you can actually have whole life success, how you can stay fit and financially well off. How can you have beautiful relationships and be impactful? How can you have it? How can you have it all? Yeah. You can have it all. It's a matter of priority and education and who you surround yourself with. So that's why I surround myself with Rachel. When I hang out with her, my life is better. I think better. I'm a better human because I think more positive. It's really natural for me to be super negative. It's part of my gift. My gift of seeing how great things can be means I see how bad they are mm. in my mind. I can mm. find everything wrong with everything. But by being around you, I think even happier thoughts on a regular basis. So I just encourage you all to like find, it's so annoying when everybody's like, surround yourself with, but it's so true. Surround yourself with people you want to be like and in specific areas. I have my fitness friends. Mm -hmm. I have my spiritually, you know, high level friends and I have G-Force that has it all, which is awesome. Yep. Financially well-off friends and pick those nuggets and embed them in your heart. Don't ever try to be just like one person. Just take pieces of what you want to be like from each person and build okay. your own person. Woo, girl. There is so much to unpack there. First of all, I want to say to those that are listening to this, you need to bookmark this, you need to share it, and you need to make sure that you are taking notes because um, she just dropped a ton of knowledge on you. So that's the first thing. The second thing is um, to work backwards. You said, you know, you take bits and pieces of people, right? I, was, I once heard a, a coach say, you know, learning from other coaches is like going to the lunch line. You take the mystery meat here from this guy and the orange from this guy and this from, and all of a sudden you have it on your plate and that's who you are, right? That represents all these different people that have poured into you. I know that I bring her up a lot because she's, she is, you know, I'm living out uh, her legacy, but that's happened for me since losing my mom, Brittany, you know, no one will ever be my mom, but I've had women that have all come around me that have been shades of my mother that have given me a little bit of this and a dab of that and a pinch of this. And, and, and it sustained me until I see her again in heaven. So that too. And then also I love that you unashamed said, listen, I'm successful. Yeah. I give back, but I'm successful. I became a millionaire somehow along the way on the heels of women's history month, women, have been conditioned to not talk about money, to not talk about success, to kind of, you know, uh, dumb yourself down a little bit, dull yourself out a little bit. Don't shine so bright. Don't be so big. You're too much is a message that I hear a lot of women get. I just love Brittany that you're like, look, I am successful. I'm successful because I work hard because I want to, I want to do good in the world. I do do good in the world. You know, I love Brittany, you being unashamed of your success. Thank you. And it's when you, when it doesn't own you, you own it. Mm -hmm. It's easy to talk about, you know, and, and from people I used to glory in being poor. And it's like, well, that's just stupid because first of all, you're already rich because you live in America. So just don't even talk because poverty has different levels all over the world. You know, I just got back from Honduras and they have three different levels of poverty. They've got poverty which is way lower than anywhere you could, you could go in America, way lower. Okay. And then they've got very, very impoverished. And then they have a freaking level called miserable as an actual class. Mm. And so they're, draw, they're trying so hard. All these nonprofits are working so hard to get the people from miserable up to the poverty line. I'm like, mm. so, so yeah, it's ridiculous. So it's not wholly to be poor. It's 100% cultural and it's this whole tall poppy syndrome of thinking like, oh, no, 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 you know, I don't want to think I'm better than anybody else. My life is aligned. My life is surrendered. And I'm not helping anybody being so broke. I can't pay my own bills. Where's God mm -hmm. in that? You know, God's a creator of the universe. He made every island. He made every continent. He made every star. He is so abundant. Why would we cap him with X amount of millions of dollars that are all digitally probably fake anyway. And I'm going to die and I can't take any of it with me. So everything's a resource. If everything is a tool surrendered to your purpose and your God call, like 
I'm the same Brittany living in my car or living here. I'm the same Brittany with or without legs. I'm the same Brittany with wrinkles, without wrinkles, with hair, without hair. You know, I'm the same Brittany and therefore my bank account doesn't dictate who I am. It's simply a magnification of the heart. That's all money does. So money does not change people. It reveals people. Mm. And I'm sure you've heard that on this podcast a lot, but like, I need billions of dollars. I got to have it because I have so many people to help. And I went to Honduras a week and a half ago. And I'm like, that's the biggest takeaway is I have got to be wildly successful because there's so much need in the world and there's so many people. And when you have resources, you get to be God's hands and feet. And the stress doesn't have to take over you because you're so finite. Like, how can we create ways for them to pull themselves up? But I do need the resources and the time and the freedom and the network to be able to allow me to do that. And so never think about money as money. It's just a tool. Learning another language is a tool. Having freedom, like we said, is a tool. Having fitness to be able to go into, you know, hard, difficult areas to get to. That's a tool that you may or may not need, depending on your piece of the puzzle. So anyway. Oh, girl, I I went like, while you're talking, I grabbed a a tissue um, because my, you know, I, I call them happy tears. My grandmother used to say, don't cry over that boy. Save those tears for happy tears, you know? And so, <laughs> that's so sweet. And, and, and you know me and anybody who's watched me, I'm moved to tears at least once a day, but I'm so moved by, yeah, I want to make, I want to make billions because there's so many people to help. There's so many things yeah. to do. Perspective is such a beautiful thing, Brittany, because it allows us to come back into alignment when we get in our flesh, when we get selfish when we get out of alignment i want to know for somebody who's listening right now who says i'm where you are either in my mind or financially living out of a car i Mm -hmm. have endured this i've endured that i want to grow a business i want to become a millionaire so that i can help people what did you do could you give my viewers some steps some actual concrete steps that you did to make it out of your car to the successful businesswoman that sits in front of us today. It's really annoying how tied it is to your mindset. Uh, It really is. And it's like, I am thinking positive. Yeah, but I wasn't. I did not believe it. So start with the fact that money is fake. So it's not a big deal. Okay. Okay. If you think it's a big deal, then it owns you, but it's not a big deal. Okay. It's It's all made up constructs so that humanity can function a little easier, a little more seamless. We used to trade cows. They're hard to carry around. So we turned it into other things, you know? So it's just not that big of a deal and you're going to die with nothing. So you might as well go for it. I think the basis of most of my teaching starts with the most impactful exercise that I ever did. I did this at 17. I walked into this ministry school where I went through, I was going through a survival slash ministry school. So I could be a hardcore missionary. And like, I was trained by green berets and like ready to go kick in doors and rescue babies. And I walked in class. I was a really good kid, homeschooled, raised on a farm, freaking worked five jobs, all of high school. I honestly didn't do anything bad. I never even cussed until I was going through a divorce. Then that, then I did cuss <laughs> once or twice, <laughs> but, um, I was a really good kid, never drank, never did anything bad with boys. And it just didn't, I was a good kid. And so I went to this ministry school and I would like stay up really late eating ice cream because I didn't have a curfew anymore. And that's all I would do. But this, when I walked into class, this teacher said, all right, today we're going to do something that'll change your life forever. Mm. Said, we're going to write your eulogy. And I was like, what's a eulogy? He said, it's the story of your life. So I was like, all right, whatever. This is morbid and weird. And I did it and it wrecked me. I was like, what? Because though I was a really good kid and I had a huge heart, I never really told people about that. I was a pretty tough kid growing up and um, I never let people see, definitely didn't see people see like my divine feminine or anything like that. Uh, I thought to be strong, you had to be like super manly. And so I was, I was pretty tough. Um, but I realized when I wrote my life story that I wasn't actually doing anything to make those statements true. Mm. And 
so instead of just showing up to class, I could show up to class and I could be in class and I could be listening instead of just like hanging out with friends. I was like with my friends and like talking about things more intentionally. Instead of reading a book, I read the right books. Mm -hmm. Watching just whatever show to escape, I would watch things that took me closer to where I wanted to be or learn something that helped me. And so I started creating an intentional life and I started aligning my thoughts and my habits and my actions with where I wanted to go. Okay. Now, talking to a captain the other day here, and he said, when you, it's so crazy because I just, we just made up, um, made up, we just recorded season two broke to woke podcast, which is awesome. And, um, gotta just, listen to it. Gotta watch. You're going to love it guys. Um, and this captain said, what I'm, oh, no, he's also our videographer. He said, what I, I'm taking away with this is what are the micro changes that change everything in your life? He mm-hmm. said, and when you're doing a, a transatlantic sale, if you're, if you change by one degree, you'll end up in a different continent. Mm. But it's that one degree of being so intentional every day that you get tighter and tighter, you really end up where you want to go. So I challenge you all to start with writing your eulogy okay. because that will give you, uh, it, it'll take all the shit out of your life. Mm. Let me say it again. It'll take all the shit out of your life because all that should, I should be doing this. I should be doing that to be a great mom. I should be learning this other language. I should be doing this laundry. I should be, blah, 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 blah. I should keep this person in my life. I should, no, get dead. So it doesn't matter. Like go for all the stuff that you really want to go for and know that this too shall pass and you can overcome anything. And worst case scenario, you move somewhere bluer and warmer, change your name, cut your hair right? So go for it. Go for the thing that God put in your heart. He wouldn't have put it in your heart if he, he wouldn't give you the vision if he didn't give you the provision, you know? So that's step number one is write your eulogy. Mm-hmm. Step number two is read uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by right. Robert Kiyosaki. Number three, read Thinking Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill and start getting your mind right. And then start understanding how to build wealth uh, it's so mindset. It's insane. It's, especially if you live in America, it's really, really easy to build wealth um, comparatively because we have a system built not on corruption. Um, and just with the systems that are in place, it is easier um, and it's totally doable. It's just always the right access. And then like knowing what to do, you can know what to do and you can skip levels by having the right network. So right now I'm really good friends with a guy named Jeremy Newsom. He teaches amazing educational programs around stock trading. And by having him in my network, I trade better. Why? Because we talk about it. We share information. We share ideas. We look at projections. And by having him in my network, I've been able to make excellent trades. And I had a 700% return on my stock account last year, which is ridiculous. I know, but that's the power of network. That is. So that's my top pieces of advice. Mm -hmm. And the best thing in the world on just like a day-to-day basis is only listen to people you want to be like and mm. in that specific area. And it's really, it, that's the key. And that's why I was talking about taking pieces from people. We're used to being raised by a parent or an aunt or an uncle or having whoever around us and they raised us. So therefore they told us everything. But when it comes to know that you're an adult and you're making decisions on your own, if, if they have horrible marriage and they keep when in and out of abusive relationships and like then playing the victim, whatever, maybe don't yeah. take their relationship advice, but take their cooking advice. They're, they might be the best cook ever, you know, but if they have, you know, somebody who's extremely fit, but super broke, don't take their financial advice, take their fitness advice. Yeah. So just again, develop the person you want to be. If somebody has some life hacks or education that you can gain from, um, don't, get rid of the whole person because they're not perfect. That was a, a big mistake I made as a youngster. I, as a 17 year old, I had like these role models and when they were just imperfect in one area, like because I'd idolized them so much, like all this stuff just crashed down around me. And I'm like, just pick and choose instead of kind of um, boycott the whole person because they're not perfect. Yeah, so, I love that. I, yeah. I love that. and. And I love, you talked about network, the power of network. And I always say I'm a billionaire because people are my currency and I'm working towards being a billionaire, billionaire, but a millionaire, millionaire, 
but I, but I'm so rich because people are my currency and that, that gentleman that you named Jeremy Newsom, because of, and I love how this, it all spider webs, right? Like you met this person and this happened and this happened, we're all interconnected and it's all part of a greater purpose. And so I meet you, I come into G-Force, I meet Jeremy. Um, and just a couple of months ago, within I'm changing the narrative, we start this, this call because we recognize that former athletes needed an outlet to fight fatherlessness, to fight, to combat depression and anxiety and loneliness. And they needed resources to be able to build their wealth and they needed inspiration. What happens when the lights go off? And so we started creating these free monthly calls called PALS, Player Alignment Liaison Calls. And your Jeremy, our Jeremy that I met through you said, I will volunteer my time 20 minutes a month uh, and, and longer. He actually stays on and answers questions and teach young athletes coming out of high school, college, NFL, how to understand uh, you know, cryptocurrency and how to understand the stock market and what to do here and what to, and I just, and it blew, it blew my mind. I, I told him, I said, you, you think you're coming on for 20 minutes, but what you don't get, and he does, he's an amazing person. But I, I said to him, I said, you may be the reason your generosity with your time may be the reason that some young man or young woman breaks out of cycles, cycles, Brittany of poverty and turns around and changes their life. And so I'm just so grateful um, for, for the power of connection. The other thing too that I thought was great is you talked about one micro change. I'm reading this book um, called How to Do the Work by the Holistic Psychologist. And she talks about for people that want to change everything, start with one micro change, just like you said. And she said, make sure you do that every day without fail for 30 days, then start adding in other changes. And she said, for the, for the woman that she gave the example in the book, she said, it might be this woman was sick. She had a chronic illness. People told her there was no hope. She just needed to basically deal with it and go on. That was it. And she talked about mindset, just like you do. So she began to drink a glass of water first thing every morning. And then when she did that for 30 days, she added journaling. Then when she did that for 30 days, she added exercise. And so that one micro change, that one you know course that could take you to another continent could literally change your life. So I, I just, um, I value and treasure you so much and the work that you're doing, not only with natural disasters, with um, human trafficking, um, the work you're doing around the world, the people that you're hosting. And I, I know we can't talk about it a lot yet because it's your story to tell, but in the future, I want you to come back on because you went from living in a car to owning an island. And we will, again, get into the full story of it later on, but you did just um, had a piece of news come out that I thought was fantastic. And that is that you're partnered with the British Virgin Islands in terms of recovery um, after natural disasters. Tell us a little bit more about that. Thank you. Yeah. So I started out, which is a long story, you know, I bought my first house at 18 at 2007, right before the big crash and burn. In the process of buying, I heard you could flip houses, which I'd never heard of before. And you could make like $10,000 per house, which is a billion dollars to an 18 year old. Yep. And then if you save those chunks, you can buy an apartment complex and you could make like $10,000 a month yep. and you build your own freaking orphanages and everybody else can. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was my plan was to just build up enough money to be able to buy an apartment complex before I turned 26. And in the process of going back overseas to Africa and different nations every year, I actually saw how just to build an orphanage, it was the craziest thing because we picked these areas because they're areas that the parents would actually sell kids for $25 because if they ran out of money, the whole family of nine would die mm. where you sell one person knowing that they're going to get raped 10 to ah. 30 times a day as an infant. And then knowing that at the end of seven years, which is normally as long as they'll live with that kind of body treatment, they'll be sold for parts, you know, where they are organ harvested. And I met the parents that had to make those kind of decisions. And they made those decisions because there was nothing else. And as horrible as it is, I'm so grateful. You and I have never had to make those kind of decisions. But what we saw is when we would pick these orphanage locations because of that desperation, all these businesses moved in around our property. And we're like, what the heck's going on? 
And it was almost like there's gold in them hills. Like, what do they know about this property that we don't know? And I was like, ah, we're building an orphanage. <laughs> but for them, they're like, Americans are investing in this region, you know? And so that's when it clicked for me that development can lead to opportunity creation. And because those businesses moved in, now everybody had jobs because they had jobs and didn't have to sell their kids. Mm. So if you can find a way to use the promise that an area is up and coming to where people have the faith and courage enough to actually start that business, then they build their own little micro economies and you can wipe out poverty and desperation related issues at their Mm. root. I was like, what? Mm. And so I use um, all my real estate skills to actually start practicing on really rough areas. Okay. I'm best known for probably, you know, turning around Stab City and Murder Acre. <laughs> um, those were my spots and making them really happy, wonderful places to live. And so there's a way to just gentrify an area or mindfully revitalize. And mm. that's something that we've learned. And now I teach so that you can actually uplift versus change an area. And so there's, there's totally different approach. Um, but there wasn't like a book on how to do this. And so I'm grateful now we know how. Anyway, so the last 10 years have been about how do you accelerate positive transformation and elevation of an area? That's again, one of the reasons Ariel is called Ariel is to keep the big picture in mind and to elevate people in places. And so it went from you know flipping a house to make money, to then go leave and move to Africa, to use all the skills I've gained from my businesses to actually help nations recover and rebuild dramatically. So a disaster can knock out places forever sometimes or for 10 to 50 years. How can we get down? How can we get that down to two? Mm. You know, how can we, how can we template transformation and make it the best thing that ever happened to them? You know, in Nashville, they always, talk about the tornadoes 98 ended up bringing all these blessings to East Nashville. I want these nations affected by hurricanes and earthquakes and eventually poverty and war to say, that's the best thing that ever happened to us because then we had a clean slate. Mm. And instead of having two economic pillars, now we have 30. So that's what I do. Um, we go in after disaster. We, a lot of times go in before disasters, have these relationships respond immediately we're like disaster insurance where we're there we already know their yeah. systems we have the relationships we orchestrate aid coming in and then we help bring the nations back online faster because a lot of times this is chaos it's basically the most chaos environment there can possibly be as everything you knew as a person is gone yes and we bring order and with that order we're able to actually bridge need to resource there's so many people want to help but they don't know how Right. We use technology to show them how you can actually make a meaningful difference where people actually need it the most. So that's been, that's a little bit of what we do. That's one of my companies and it's my favorite. And so we have the contract to be the disaster management arm of the British Virgin Islands and to help them in the event of something happening. And we just hosted the first ever resiliency summit. <laughs> leaders, nonprofits, first responders, everybody's actually in the same room and sharing ideas and information and contact information so that everybody's not this lonely planet by themselves after something comes in. It, it, it's going to be the difference between life or death in many situations to do that. So I want to challenge you all to take things that bother you, create things that solves the problem. You know, getting to hang out with Richard Branson is one of, one of the blessings of living here. And one day we were sitting on the beach and I was like, what made you start Virgin Galactic? And he said, I was, I was laying on the beach with Larry Page and um, I think it was Larry and we we're looking up at the stars. And I said, why can't we go up there for lunch tomorrow? And somebody else on the beach said, well, it's too difficult. It's too dangerous. It's too expensive. It's too difficult. And he said, well, why don't I just pause for a second. I'm going to let you traffic. <laughs> uh, why don't I just, why don't I just, that's where you can yeah, Why don't I just make a company that makes it not expensive, not dangerous and not difficult 
And there we are with Virgin Galactic. He decided to tackle something that difficult. So making space travel easily accessible to the common man eventually is his dream. So amazing. That's really amazing like you, Brittany. And I, um, on the way out, I, I, I asked this to most of my guests. And a year ago um, today, I was actually interviewing the number one W, the number one pick in the WNBA draft. Like, you know, her name's Sabrina Ionescu. And I was just thinking about her and the, and the, the advice that she gave and somebody like you just amazing, amazing people who are impacting people who are changing the world, who are a force for good. What is something that Brittany Turner is thinking about this week as you go into your week? that you've set your intention on. I always say, if you waited till Monday, you're too late. Sunday, get your mind right, set your goals. So what is something that you're thinking about this week, Brittany, that maybe our listeners can also um, marinate on and apply in their own lives? Great one. I've got my journal from this morning. Okay. Um. All right, I got a weird one for you. Okay. I've got an easy one and a weird one. I don't know how deep you are. This is going to be weird, but uh, we'll start with the easy one. And it was, I've not felt motivated to work out lately. Okay. I'm tired. I've been going, I was in five continents in the last 20 days, you know, 25 days. And it was like just a lot. And I'm like, I don't feel like getting up. <laughs> so I was reading something this morning and it said, if you're in poor physical condition, you cannot be useful to anyone. And so to stop looking at, you know, your fitness or your health as a vanity thing, because Mm -hmm. every day, you know, I, I argue that all the time, women are so much more than like just our beauty, even though we're talked talked about so much and so worshiped and it's whatever. Um, so when I'm like, uh, that's not my identity, blah, blah, blah. Then I have a great excuse to not have to try. But if I really do want to serve the world and I want to do it for a long time, I want to be able to help as many people as possible. And I need to be in that physical condition to be able to do that. And so to understand that your body needs to be in alignment with your long-term goals, um, uh, is a good reminder and get me off my butt and awake earlier in the morning than I felt like it. And then that God gave me this weird idea a couple of years ago, and I've, I've actually done it recently. Okay. It's called future journal. And you're going to look like a psycho if anybody ever finds this. So hide your journal. Well, okay. Lock it up, burn it. If you, something happens to you, but don't, <laughs> it's called future journal. So it's writing the day as if it was already done, but mm. maybe a different time period. And so almost like a year from now, where do you really, what do you want to be doing every morning? What are you thanking God for? That's like come true in your life. And it's this weird way to walk in faith that things are already done. Yes. And so if you want to be in a loving relationship, it's, you know, today I woke up to a text message from the man of my dreams and we are planning this blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, whatever it is, or I got to go on the most beautiful walk on the beach where I live, you know start writing things as if they already are. And then I don't know what it does to your subconscious. Again, it's a God idea. I'm not really sure how it works, but it, it works miracles. Cause I looked back and I saw one and it like today I woke up and I read one from a year ago and I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm actually living every single thing that was so far away. It felt like it was 50 years away when I wrote it. I'm living that life right now. And so how can we continue to walk in that level of faith? almost to where you're writing your story and you're in reverse. So that's a weird idea, but, uh, and I hope that is an answer to your question. If I answered it weird, let me know. No, it was, it's, it's beautiful. And it, I saw a, a tweet from, um, and I, I forget her name, so I'm not doing justice, but basically she said, it's already written. It's already done. It's already going to come to pass. It's just my job to have the fate to walk it out. And I was like, yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! like that's yeah. it, you know, like, that's it. And we just have to have the faith to walk it out. So that's perfect. All right. Last thing, Brittany, before I let you go, and by the way, yeah, um, she's going to come back. She's going to come back. She's going to pour into us because yeah, this has been amazing and absolute clinic. We'll put the information for G-Force as well. Um, and you have got to follow Brittany. You have got to, you, you got to know her and follow all those steps. What does Brittany Turner do 
for self-care. We focus on that so much in the movement. It is so important. You cannot pour from an empty cup. What does Brittany Turner do for self-care? I journal. I mean, I, that's like, yeah. the, that's the way I hear God. That's the way I like reconnect. And if I'm having a crazy day, I'll call them crazy days where you just like, you're anxious and you're stressed and you know, ah, I just have to write, you know, I'm definitely an external processor, but I've learned not all humans can handle it. Yeah. And you shouldn't because you should be able to unload to God and you should be able to say anything. And so I will journal and I'll write if I have to just get everything out, I call it uh, spiraling down and then spiraling up, <laughs> All right? Everything horrible and then everything so wonderful or how everything horrible will end up turning into the best blessing ever. Mm. If I were to guess how God would turn this into a really cool story, this is how I would use it if I was him, but it's still a guess. And so just constantly trying to, you know, you get out the junk, but you don't infect somebody else with it necessarily. And then you, you have, you back out and you observe it. You, for me, it's get an aerial view of that and say, hmm, what of this BS are you actually believing? What's mm -hmm. true, but still could be used for good. Like, I, I remember one day looking in the mirror, getting ready for some big speech that I was going to, and I was like getting ready. And I remember saying, God, I wish you'd let me live in my car a little longer. Mm. Now, when I lived in that car, I did not think that for one second <laughs> I thought the whole time how dare you abandon me I look like such a fool in, in front of my family da, 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 da. I, like was definitely not nice about it when I lived in the car I wasn't like filled with faith and believing this is all gonna be great I like being real with y'all but now looking back I'm so grateful for the cool story which is riddled with pain and anguish you know it's like it's always better looking back kind of like hiking but Thank you, Lord, for a cool enough story that people even want to listen, that I could reach more people with your love because of this crazy journey I've been on. I'm not selling you to attract problems on purpose or ask for them. They'll be there. Just recognize sometimes you get powerful sound bites in the form of rejection. Mm. Like Beyonce was told she could never sing. Oprah was told blah, 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 blah. You know, there's so many good sound bites. They're going to be great for your book later, guys. So just... <laughs> process them that way versus actually building a foundation off of them. Yeah. Because that foundation will be pretty weak. Thank you so much for having me, Rachel. Brittany, this Happy is, well. um, this is so good. Like it's so good. Um, I, I, I'm sorry that he slept all the way through it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it was so good. And so many people are going to take so much from it. And I cannot wait to see where you go. I cannot wait for you to come back on, on the show on Sunday soul and, and be able to tell us more about all the wonderful things going on in your life. But thank you, my friend. Thank you. And God bless you. And may you acquire billions so that you can continue to help people on every continent all over this planet and, um, and help them out of poverty and help them to live at their highest and best self, to be the king, the queen, to be royal, like they were meant to be. And thank you, my friend, for changing the narrative. You're amazing. Hey, Rachel Barbeau here. If you love this video, please subscribe. You can also hit that little bell down there and that will let you know every single time we go live. And one better, leave us a comment. And the ultimate, share it with a friend because that's the power of social media. That's the power of good news. It travels fast. I love you guys. Thank you so much. See you next time.